Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching this. If you're watching this now or watching this sometime into the future. As you guys know, if you've been here before, I'm Jack. And over in this square rectangle over here is Ben. I got Boris behind me, the drunk Russian, and I got Minogi as well. And don't ask why she's called Minogi. Go look on a few past episodes, you'll understand why. And we are back here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you're staying safe on your side of the internet. So boys and girls, girls and guys, we're going to be chatting, ranting, raving as we always do on this channel, hence why this channel exists. Uh, mostly we started off very humbly doing things like comic books and stuff like that and cartoon series and a lot of Marvel and DC. So we're going to kind of go back to that ever since this, the new spider mans going to be coming out, which is going to be exploring like the whole multiversal kind of ideas, such good characters and so on, having a free Spider-Man. So we're going to go into to another storyline which we think we may be able to work in or just do it as a completely separate live adaptation so without further ado let's get ready to rap people okay so here we go with this one if you have ever seen the spider-man classic cartoon on fox kids back in the day like you youngins won't remember fox kids that was the shiz back in the day where we had every kind of tv we had the old school x-men we had spider-man fantastic four we had a lot and it had a lot of classic uh, episodes as well in the 90s Spider-Man. So the 90s Spider-Man obviously had our favorite web slinger, Peter Parker. But there's one particular episode we wanted to go back to. There's a particular episode where he's pretty much done. He's fed up with being Spider-Man. So he ends up trying to have a normal life and trying to, uh, him with the help of Kirk Connors, trying to cure himself of the whole Spider-Man-ness. But instead, it all goes to hell, and he ends up becoming a human beast Spider-Man monster, which I think we have a picture of. Uh, we do indeed. So that's what we're going to get into, the mutant spider or the man spider story. Which the, man, the, spider, the man spider Spider-Man, I suppose, is what it is. The man spider Spider-Man. <laughs> but so essentially what it was is that he takes a serum which him and Kirk Connors try to eradicate the mutagen, but in doing so, at first, he sort of accelerates his abilities where he looks like this, where yeah. <laughs> he basically has an extra pair of hands, quite literally. Uh, quite moving hands of being a crime fighter. And no. I think it's, it's only a two-parter episode, but it takes a while before he mutates again where he ends up becoming something a bit more monolithically horrific, which is this. This, the... thing is, gen this is genuinely scary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is, this whole story was loosely based on issue 101 to 103, which yeah. was dated back in the early 60s, which, ironically enough, was when Morbius was first ever introduced. Yes. So, although I don't know if I could add Morbius to the live action attempt, if we were to, well, to be honest, with like the the story which this has, we'll we'll go through the characters in a minute. But I think it would be, I think it would just have too many characters in it because the story in a half an hour is just so convoluted and messy. Yeah, but. We both agreed on the fact that this had to be in a continuation of the Sam Raimi movies because yeah. out of all the Spidey movies we've had so far, his is the only one that's actually based around the idea that it was a mutation power than it just being a... He has half spider powers, if that makes sense. Yeah, because because in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, he's the only one to have organic webbing. Yeah. And I think that was down to just artistic license. And then, weirdly enough, in the comics, they sort of added it. Then they got rid of it and never really used it ever again. No. But for the most part, I'd have to say we sort of have to stick to degree the idea that he wanted to get rid of his powers. I mean, in my opinion, I would have to say... I wouldn't want him to lose, like, MJ or Aunt May, but I would have to say there had to come a point where being Spider-Man put such a strain on a relationship with MJ that he had to choose either being Spider-Man or being Peter Parker, because despite the fact they are literally the same person, they're two different sides to the same coin. Well, I imagine that we're going to get, in the new Spider-Man film, we're going to get, like, a, I think 
it's quite possible we're going to get an older Peter Parker, like the Sam Raimi Peter Parker. So, in, so in a way, I think you could easily slide that storyline into maybe just before this film, I think. Yeah. Because obviously, if you're going to get an older one, what could have happened in that time? But I think the Sam Raimi Spider-Man would be a much better incarnation for the human spider. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it makes a bit more sense in terms that he it could accelerate his already mutated powers to the limits instead of abolishing it as he's trying to do. Mm. I mean, obviously there was Kurt Connors within those movies. It was only a brief moment and he wasn't anything like the Kurt Connors that he should be, but that's a whole debate in itself. But I think as a weird catalyst in terms of how the powers accelerate from the antidote in terms of it, is that it could be like he's taking the antidote and it's like it Kurt Connor says like it takes twenty four hours for it to fully affect. So he literally has like the last twenty four hours of being Spider Man. He's trying to stay out of trouble, but being Spidey he can't stay out of trouble. And he comes across like these just random guys that are trying to rob a bank and that's where it goes downhill from there. Cause these are my little notes for it all, but this is just how I'm done it doing it today. Yep. So, <clears throat> being Spidey, he managed to take down two out of three guys because it's Spidey. Like it doesn't take much. And then all of a sudden, you start sort of going down the dark alleyway, chasing the third guy, and then everything goes into a dark fog. Like you can't see anything down this alleyway. It's just like very heavy set fog. And then you see like a very weird figure, which to all of us that are comic book fans, you can see like a very domey shape, which is called Mysterio. You end up having Mysterio trying to use his talents in a way to antagonize Spider-Man to distract him. But in doing so, causes him to have like a psychotic break because that's what Mysterio does best. He knows how to manipulate and use people's emotions against them which causes him to sort of overreact like a panic attack type thing yeah. and ends up transforming into six on Spidey. Only the human version at first, I think, because it would just be too much too soon for it to go to the full Spider-Man, Spider-Man. I mean, that's a bit of a tongue twister that, in that, itself. That, 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 blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but that's as far as I got with my notes, really, because... Ironically enough, we were supposed to have got Mysterio for Spider-Man 4 before they decided to reboot it and we got Andrew Garfield's movies instead. Yes. Which, who was supposed to have been played by Bruce Campbell, who was actually in all three of the Spider-Man movies as random characters along the way. And the first film, he's uh, an announcer for a wrestling company when he introduces uh, Bonesaw McGraw. Yeah. And Spider-Man or Bones on McGraw, Macho Man, Randy Savage, massive wrestling fan here. Uh, number two, was he the the clerk or what was he? Uh, I believe he was meant to be an usher. They yes, they put him down. Right. They put him down as a snooty usher, is what it's listed as on IMDb. Yeah, and then in the third film, he is like he's. Things like the what? What would you call it? The front of house, like staff guy, like the French guy with the mustache. Uh, well, he's listed as barman, like he's bar staff or something. But you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but again, it would have been a really cool thing to bring in Mysterio then, but then obviously things just didn't go the way it was. So then I'm trying to figure out how do we go from here? Because within the original Man Spider, Spider Man thing, I can't remember a lot of it because it's been a long time since I've watched it. But obviously there was Morbius. Who Pun else was involved? We had Morbius, we had Punisher, and we had, I feel we had Blade at one point. And we also had uh, Craven the Hunter as well. But Craven the yes. Hunter was the main one. Mm -hmm. So maybe, but then... maybe you can just have, let's just stick, we could possibly just stick to Craven for now and then move on to the other characters after. Yeah. I mean, you could have it so. Because I think it was like his, was it, I think it was like Peter Parker's friend who was also a scientist decides to bring in her, I'm not sure what he is, to her boyfriend or something like that. 
didn't like and decides to bring him in to track down this man spider thingy to try and capture it because obviously Craven the Hunter shouldn't need yeah. to explain that one and um, obviously it ends up being one heck of a battle <laughs> yeah I mean Craven the Hunter is definitely one of Spider-Man's most bizarre villains because <sighs> I don't understand the logic behind that. Like, he's obviously a hunter. He's meant to hunt down the most like exotic animals, and then he gets bored. I think literally he just gets bored of hunting animals because he's done everything he can. So he starts hi- hunting down vigilantes or superheroes based yeah, on animals. Like I just, I know it's bizarre. <laughs> it, I, I mean, this thing... anything comic books bizarre. Yeah, that that's true. But, I mean, he is getting on quite a bit. But I would say Danny Trejo would be quite a interesting concept in terms of a Craven the Hunter. But I don't know who else would be fit enough to like contend with fighting and being someone like Craven. I'd say he's a bit young. He's a bit younger than that actor, but I would say from The Walking Dead, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, because he looks like Craven the Hunter. Yeah, no, that's a he fair point. He looks like Craven. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a fair point. But then Craven as well. It. I try to think what nationality he is. He's not Mexican, but he has like a Spanishish or Ita- some. Well, no, because I would have thought, because of the whole African thing, I thought he would have been, was he in Africa or South America? But I thought he maybe have been like South African, because they've got th- a little bit of a funny accent. I don't know. I always thought that he was South American of some kind. So whether or not he could pull off an accent like that as well, it's a very iffy line to walk. Whether or not you want to keep the accent, though, is a different matter. Yes. Uh, but then, no, I just got research. I just got research this right now, just to see where it's from. Because <laughs> otherwise, this is just otherwise that's just gonna bug me. Yeah. So like, like as we go on with um, like Craven, obviously so you bring it in to like capture the man spider. But at the same time, I think in the same breath, Blade in the same two episodes, Blade's after Morbius, where Spider Man's mm-hmm. after Morbius. Then you got Punisher who's after Blade and Spider Man, and you yeah. got Craven who's after Spider Man and maybe Morbius. So it's bloody complicated. <laughs> it's a hell of a kerfuffle. Like at the end of the day, I think Spider Man. Oh, no, Craven the Hunter, he's from Russia. Really? Yeah, I've just looked at it just now. I'm crying out loud. I sw- Not to be funny, but there seems to be a lot of Russian baddies within Marvel. I mean, I know, obviously, there was the whole Cold War. It made kind of sense at the time to have everybody a bad no, guy. It's always Russian. Russian. It's never like Peru or something. <laughs> no, no, I mean... No, I just... I don't fully understand... How do you get from the? Because the thing is, he doesn't look not to be harsh. Like, he doesn't hunting look Russian in Africa, but you're Russian and it's cold as hell there. Like the only thing that you hunt in Russia is each other. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that's a fa- there's that. I was going to say polar bears as well, but I think that's really pushing it. Yeah, but I mean, it's going to be a hell of a kerfuffle to try and explain how so many it feels like uh the whole episodes was like spy versus spy where it's like nobody knows who they're up against because there's so many intermingled yeah plots yeah like i said you've got punisher who's going after blade and spider-man you've got blade who's going after morbius morbius going after spider-man craven's after spider-man and also morbius i think it's just you don't know you get lost of who's going after who <laughs> yeah i mean I think by the end of the cartoon episode, wasn't it that he just literally lost it because Morbius drained him in completely to the point where he's an old man. And then he goes and sees Aunt May and he weirdly looks a bit like Uncle Ben. That's why Aunt May ends up I, like looking at... I think that's another episode, to be honest. I'm sure it wasn't far off that because it, I remember... It wasn't far off, no, because obviously, although they managed to cure... Like Craven managed to cure Spider-Man. Well, with his doc, well, Craven's doctor friend managed to cure him. But um, I would love to see that visual of like the head turning into like a proper spider. I think it would terror. Like I'm not sure 
you how do you get like mind you that would terrify kids yeah i mean if this was a natural like, movie the cartoon you, was scary enough yeah i mean you'd have to it couldn't be anything less than an r-rated movie if this were to become a movie because the sheer graphics alone yeah just the uh... well it's like there was pincers here there was pincers down here which i never understood um, why it was up here because yeah. the mouse down here, but it's like, what, what's these then, ones up here doing? And then I remember, like, there was loads of people online when I was looking at this on Reddit, everybody complaining about, oh, he's only got six arms. It was just like, no, because spiders technically have legs. He's got two legs and he's got yeah. the six arms. So technically, he's got eight legs. Well, yeah, I mean... If that's... you go over spider logic, he's technically got that many legs. Yeah, but then... I mean, I always wondered why they chose doing just six arms instead of it being like two, like an extra pair of arms and an like extra pair of legs. Because then it would have balanced out in a way, but then <laughs> I think it would have looked worse. It probably would have looked worse. <laughs> I mean, it's a random thought, I know, but if you were to have like an extra pair of legs, how the hell do you go to the bathroom? <laughs> so this is like my the way my brain works. Like how, how the hell go from Spider Man to how does a Spider Man Spider Man a man a spider the Spider Man? It's a like tongue twister, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's get back on track. So yeah. So I think personally, because it's so convoluted, I think we just get rid of all the other characters and just stick with Craven. Yeah, I think bringing in Craven would help, but. I would argue, in some weird logic, it would be intriguing if, like, J. Jonah Jameson put in an advert to hunt down the man spider spider man. Yes, yeah, I see and that. And you have it in, like, a really rusty bar where you get all the, like, grooming, gruff people of New York City, and you see, like, the newspaper on, the, like, a billboard or something inside the bar, and you just yeah. see this knife go... Thump! Straight into the like middle of the picture of the man, Spider Spider Man, he just goes, "That is my kill," and he just that's all you get of Craven until he starts hunting down Spider Man throughout New York City. Yeah, just because like the guy Craven, uh, although Craven does he even have any powers? I think it's or is he just stupidly strong? He's in incredibly strong. He's got height and smell, I think, to a degree because he's so attuned to hunting things. But he doesn't rely. The only kind of tech he has, to a degree, is like the actual weaponry he has, like whether it be machine guns or knives or whatever. Like he doesn't rely on a lot of technology. He uses his own like military training. I mean, it's because the other thing as well is how would he track him down? Not to be funny, New York City is a very busy city and trying to find one because <laughs> the thing is as well is that obviously the webbing doesn't last forever because they always say at least within the comics and i don't know if it happened within the films that the webbing dissolves after an hour so it doesn't clog up new york no because obviously we know in the real world if you've seen spider webs or whatever they can like last a quite a long time yeah so <sighs> So, yeah, because I think he like starts off trying to like track like the webbing and everything, or like I can't remember how exactly he tracks him. It tracks him to a warehouse. Oh, but then again, I I've just remembered something because Vulture was in the episode as well. That's the one. That's who transforms into the. It only just came to my mind. Yeah. God, this this is such a wonderful episode. Like, if you haven't seen it, folks, you really need to watch the nineteen characters all in the same episode. <laughs> well, I mean, it was the most monumentally crazy episode. Like, it was the like four or five episodes long. This whole saga because it it was such a fascinating series. This and obviously there has been other shows ever since of Spider Man, but I don't think anything's come as close as this. No, but. I mean, I don't think you could use Vulture. No, definitely not. No, so obviously we can just stick with uh, stick with Craven to a degree. So he tracks him to the warehouse and everything where I think that the warehouse, yeah, the warehouse is actually where he fully mutates into like the spider creature. 
Yeah. I mean, I would argue maybe Craven hunts him down not as a way as a kill, but more of a way to enhance his own strength as a like possibility to fight against other things. Well, yeah, because um, like because um, Craven's doctor friend like was saying, just like saying, no, that is my friend, and like I need you to like help him. I don't want you to kill. I, like you can't kill him. I need to help him. So then you could obviously have it so. Maybe in some weird logic, it ties back to Oscorp because a lot of things within the Sam Raimi universe was tied yes. to Green Goblin. Yeah, yeah. And so, obviously, you got Harry, who's the only one left. He obviously knows who Spider-Man is. But did he die at the end of ep- uh, last... Yes, he did. He died at the end of Spider-Man 3. Ah, okay, that's really sh- shoddied my idea now, then. <laughs> ah, damn it. Why Sorry. did he? I know. I just completely forgot he bit, bit the dust. Um, God damn it! It's a hell of a thing. Um, I mean, you could, to a degree, have it so Kurt Connors needs him alive as well for research for his own purposes to look at like how animals mutate within people's DNA. So he can look at it for his own use later on. Yeah. But it's going from like how to bring him back to being human, I think is the hardest part out of all of this because it was only by sheer fluke that he came back to being human again. Yeah, because I yeah, because I think I can't remember me, it was I like, brought back to being like young and then I can't remember if it was sometime after like Vulture like turned him old or I can't remember how it all worked. It's just it's so complicated trying to I thought I had it all in my head, but it turns out it's more complicated than I thought. <laughs> I think from what happened is Spidey found a way of like regressing back slowly by like concentrating hard enough to try and retain his humanity, but it was still dormant within him to a degree. He ends up fighting Vulture. Vulture makes him an old man, but it siphons out the like corrupt part of him that makes him the man spider spider man. And then yes, he ended... yes, I know where you're going now. Yeah. And then obviously at some random time, because it's just randomly he mutates into the yeah. man spider. Yeah, because obviously, then... yeah, Peter ends up like for sheer fluke becoming young again. Yeah. And then Vulture also ended up taking the part of the human spider. So we end up having the spider vulture. Yeah. Or spulture, I suppose. Spulture. Not spatula, but spulture. Yes, spulture. Yeah, that's what we're going to call it now, spulture. But, yeah, I mean, the thing... It just reports the amount of characters and, like, you got, like, two plots in, like, one thing. It's just... I think there was three plots, technically, because if you think about, like, the massive crossover, as we said earlier, with the fights with all of them, plus you've got the vulture thing, (laughs) which doesn't help matters... I mean, to be honest, I don't even know how, how as a kid, I managed to understand it. Because as an adult, I'm like, eh? <laughs> I think it was just the fact that there was enough kapow, pow, and then... Yeah, like, oh, it's all right, the kids won't notice. Yeah. But, I mean, the thing that I always found really bizarre was, like, obviously he looked similar, but not completely like Uncle Ben. So then he goes and see Aunt May, but he doesn't explain who he is. He's just, like... Goes there to try and get some clothing, and Aunt May just happily helps him. Yeah, like that really is really fucky. Like I, because sh- oh, I haven't, I haven't had a man in here for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a different sort of cobwebs that might be needing to dust out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the thing is. The f- one thing I love about the Aunt May character in all of the movies we've had so far is that she's got Benjamin Button syndrome where she seems to be getting younger by each movie. Yeah, because like we had a like, well, obviously my favourite Aunt May will always be the Sam Raimi Aunt May because like, well, she look, she is Aunt May. And then you add the Andrew Garfield who was just a touch younger, so maybe in like a, like late 50s, I think. And then yeah. you have the next Aunt May who I swear was in her 40s. And I, because I kept making the joke to you that eventually we're going to get so many Spider-Man films where she's going to get younger and younger to the point where Spider-Man is just, where like, I think, yeah, Spider-Man is just a sperm and she's going to be a baby. 
Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. It's just so many other things within the whole um, Sam Raimi movies was like a lot of it was based around science. So obviously we were trying to figure out what actual logic in terms of why, like why would he become the man spider thing? Because well, obviously, well, technically, this technically it's not really canon, so we can play around with it as much as we want, really. Yeah, I mean, I try to think. It's as... not in any form of continuity, really. No, but then, would you have MJ be a part of this at all? Because I don't think she was she, in. I don't think she had really much part in it at all to be honest. i think she was at the point where she either died or disappeared mysteriously if you remember that whole random story arc oh there was that random story arc of where like she what was it i call it she got hydro syndrome where she became like where she was a clone of mj but she was like water based i can't remember it yeah oh god it was just a nightmare trying to figure out <laughs> but she wasn't really prominent to the original story, so whether or not we could use her as well as what as a voice of reason to bring him back to sanity, or yeah, quite possibly. But would you have the same actress like the uh, what was it Kirsten Stewart, Kirsten Dunst? You mean Kirsten Dunst? I knew it was Kirsten something. Yeah, um, like the same MJ, just to keep it original. Yeah, I would. I mean, she did. She was a decent actress for the movie, like. It's just a shame she just didn't enjoy being in it. No, she didn't. I mean, I love the fact that it's in the very last movie, it got to the point where she hated it so much that she they used a mannequin for her to do shots where he's, like, going through New York. You can tell it's, like, there's no effort of him swinging because he's just clinging on. It's like... Uh... Yeah, we're just, well, mind you, just like Tobey Maguire will always be my favourite Spider Man, but I'm done. Like, I, I, Tom Holland, brilliant. Andrew Garfield, we don't talk about that. Um, yeah. But yeah, Tobey Maguire, I just feel is the Spider Man where you can do so much with, where you can do so much with that. Just, I like the organicness of it, you know, mind you. The web shooters, like, I would have preferred the web shooters, but I like the take on the organic webbing and so on. I quite like that. But the only thing which is a bit which is something which doesn't really seem to make much sense all they had it as was the spider that bit him was just a rare spider not mm -hmm. a radioactive spider which that's one bit i really did not like about that film yeah i never really got that because if that's the case like it why was no one else bitten before because surely like it was just by sheer fluke that nobody else seemed to have got oh, yeah, the power. If this spider has existed for like however long, surely it would have bit at least one person by now. Well, this is it, like because it was the only one they had. The well, surely only... there's got to be others then. Well, yeah, because like they hatch in what the hundreds, if not thousands, sometimes depending on the species. Yeah, like hundreds and hundreds. I mean, the thing is as well with the Sam Raimi Spider-Man was that it was supposed to have had a cameo with the X-Men movies. Yes. Would you have wanted to use that in some weird logic? Uh, maybe. It's just trying to not make it too complicated, if that makes sense. But mind you, there was there was a point in um, where you did see the X-Men in the cartoon where Wolverine, I think, was hunting uh, Spider-Man, I think. Yeah, he was. But the even weirder thing is that within the comic canon, still to this day, he actually knew Spider-Man's parents. Oh, yeah, he would have done, wouldn't he? Yeah, uh, I can't remember what the story is, but apparently he worked alongside them years and years before Peter came along. Um, and I think they even wanted to make Logan as like their potential kid's godparent along the way, but that's a hell. But this is a hell of a thing. Like, could you imagine Wolverine as your godfather? Well, it'd be it'd be wicked, but <laughs> But I mean The only other thing I trying to think of, like obviously we don't use too many characters, otherwise it complicates matters. 
but I could see the idea of using Sandman as a way of redeeming himself because he didn't die. No, he, he just, technically did not die. He's still he's around. The, He's the only villain, I think, throughout the entire saga that doesn't die. No, he's still around. So, he went, but he's around. Well, he blew off into the wind, basically. Literally just went... <laughs> he blew off into the wind. <laughs> he did, though. Like, he, he just basically said, like, I'm so sorry, like, I didn't mean to shoot your Uncle Ben. And he just felt really sorry for himself and just went... <sighs> yeah. But you could have him... Have a look at that. He could be like, maybe he's gone out of America trying to like get away from the cops because he was being hunted down by the cops for basically escaping prison. But then we never found out if he like managed to help his daughter or anything because his daughter was really ill with whatever. I have a good idea with that now then. So you could have where Kurt Connors has been a trying to help out his daughter because obviously being a doctor, he knows his head around. And like, what if like, he's also trying to help out Sandman as well because he finds that, like, he tells him about his mutation or something. Exactly. But because of the fact that he's a criminal, he has to hide away. So he's like hidden maybe in yeah, South right. America or whatever, but he's still in communication with... Doc Connors in some way. Okay, so like Craven and Sandman. Yes. Okay. So you could so you could have Craven as like being hired by J. Jonah Jameson to hunt down the man spider, but you could have Sandman as a voice of reason because obviously Kurt Connors knows that it's Spider Man that's gone a bit. Yeah, and obviously, and, like there'd be Sandman who feels like he like like he knows Spider Man is Peter Parker, so he would feel like he owes him something. Exactly. So you could have a whole full-on battle between the Man Spider Spider Man, Craven, Sandman, all three of them at the same time. I reckon that'd be wicked. Because you could have it so like it's so random that like, you don't see Sandman enter America, but you could have it in a construction yard where you got Man Spider versus Craven, and there's this big pit of sand. And Craven's just literally standing there, and he's just about to start, and then you see that he's stuck, and he's like. What is, what is he stuck on? You see the behemoth of Sandman come up and go, Leave him alone! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he just flings him across the side, and then it's a whole battle between all three of them. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be quite wicked. Oh. You see, these are the nice things that happen when we're on Blue <laughs> Sometimes we just come up with these ideas on the fly. I mean, because the thing is with Craven, obviously, is that he is so able to adapt himself quickly. Yes. You could. Ha I think one thing weirdly enough is that his choice weapon is a machete knife, and it's like this weird utilitarian machete knife where it can cut through anything and it can heat up or whatever. What if he uses a knife to heat up Sandman to the point where he's glass and tries to shatter him? Yes. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> See what I mean? So, like, he tries, he goes to stab him and he goes, Is that supposed to hurt? No, this will. And he just goes, Pfft. And you see him slowly turn to glass bit by bit by bit. So it's like up to here. Yeah. And he just about moves enough and goes, Pfft, breaks it off. And then they continue the fight. Yeah. But <sighs> obviously, like, we got the logistics down of what the fight is, who's doing it, and how. But it's trying to bring him back to being human again. That's the thing that I struggle to try and condense down into a two-hour movie. Yeah, because I think obviously, yeah, the cures the cure that came from his science he made. Although we never, although I don't think it's ever fully explained exactly how she managed to find the cure. But I mean, you could always go back to the idea that. It, they could use tech from Oscorp as a way of like they've been analysing Spider-Man for years because it's just a random anomaly because obviously Green Goblin was obsessed with being strong and whatever and even though he did die he must have had contingency plans or whatever so you could have it so they've been analysing Spider-Man from the moment he appeared pretty much Yes. Yeah. so Obviously, the fact that Green Goblin, it could have been Harry has like some random thing that Pete gave him. Maybe somehow there's like DNA of Peter before he became Spider Man in some bizarre logic that they could use to try and bring him back to being human or try and split him from the Spider Man thing. 
Yeah. So then you got two sides of him fighting to like control. Yes, yeah. So instead of it just like him shrinking back to being human, you could have it so he's like bursting out of the man spider thing. So it's like an inner struggle, oh. literally an inner struggle. You mean like a snake shed in its skin? Like pretty so. much. Or like maybe like a butterfly coming out of a cocoon, you know? But the thing is, or something like that. Thing is, tarantulas do shed their shed their like outer bodies anyway. Yeah, so do. in yeah. a way, it's because like, have you been on YouTube to see those like those those time lapse videos of them doing it? It's just ugh. yeah. It, it, I just do that. I, even though I love Spider Man, I freaking hate spiders. I'm terrified. Same. Yeah, same. But I don't know how else you could bring him back to being human, other than it being like they had to be a base DNA for it to go from. Yeah, I'll manage, uh, like, you'll may- maybe imagine to isolate the gene and finding a way to eradicate, like, that part of the spider. Yeah, I mean... But then again, wouldn't that, wouldn't that contradict itself? Because it would have to wipe out the DNA... It would have to wipe out, like, his powers, pretty much. Yeah, so then it would be... You'd have to find a way... Because the only other thing I can think of... Is do you remember the bad guy, the Jekyll, who creates the clone saga and you get Ben Riley and all that? Yeah. In some bizarre twisted logic, he could be the one that fixes the day and then it could spin off into Spider Man 5 where you get the clone saga. Yes. So I would love to see that Ben Riley thing, but then again, it always like it always like sparks that question up. I'm like, so is Ben Riley the real Peter Parker or is he the clone? I think within the um, comics, it's Ben Riley was the original, but it's the clone that continues to think is the original. I don't know. Oh, but like, whenever you do anything with like anything like cloning, it's always a massive boy. <laughs> but the other thing that I always find bizarre is the fact that obviously he dyes his hair blonde to dif- differentiate himself, but he doesn't have a job. So how does he afford the hair dye? Yeah, that's why I'm wondering. Maybe he just nicked it. Unless he was well, a really I'm good, wondering really good shoplifter. Maybe like the other Spidey like sends him money every now and then just to keep up the ruse. Oh yeah, just like I can't keep the secret in anymore. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, that could be a nice spin-off into the whole Ben Riley cloning thing. I found just a re- that was a really good episode. Really, really cool. And then obviously we got the. Like the uh, the amalgamations of all the different Spider Man from different timelines and everything, but obviously since they're doing the whole uh, Spider Man No Way Home thing, obviously we're going to get that with the three uh, Spider Man: Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland, and Tobey Maguire. Mm-hmm. So that could be a possibility. Maybe I just don't see that you can't. I don't think you can't not do that with all the other Spider Man. I think. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, it's amazing that we're going to have this crossover event in terms of spider people, but I just hope that it's not set too high our expectations because we know what we want. Yeah, but it's just, I'm looking forward to how they're going to explain how these spider men are in, like, this, in the same... <sighs> in the same place and why they look different that's something i really want explained if they do explain that but oh my oh my goodness but either way we have learned through a lot of experience ever since this channel existed whenever any of our favorite films or whatever come out not to have your expectations too high because we will likely be wrong definitely i mean we've tried for the best part of what a year and a bit now to try and accumulate theories on god knows what when it came to anything new i think we've had a few times where we've been reasonably right but not fully right no because there was a few that we've gone back on where i feel like we sort of predicted the future almost because i think there was a few marvel ones we predicted as well Mm -hmm. i'm not saying we were like 100 percent correct but i was looking back on a few episodes going oh my god i think we actually predicted the future jesus yeah (laughs) but what else can we add today before we wrap things up well one last thing to um 
add to this, obviously we'll go into like your next topic. But uh, when it comes to Spider-Man Far From Home, I am looking forward to seeing Tobey Maguire back, the original, the OG. I'm looking forward to seeing him again. I maybe he'll be like, although because obviously it's been a while since he's played the role of Spider-Man since 2007. So what's what's that? 2007, like 14 years? Yeah, it's 14 years ago, give or take. So I'm wondering if we're going to have the older version of Spider-Man, I think, like an older Tobey Maguire. Yeah, he's going to be a bit more grizzled. I would also argue to a degree... Maybe he's not as sarcastic because that's the one thing that his is a bit more different to the rest. (laughs) That he's a very he's not he's not completely sassy, but he has that he's a very sarcastic character, which although that is what Spidey is, he's meant to be more quippy than he is sarcastic. Yeah, and he's just a nerd. He's not cool, you know. Just Oh god, that just reminds me of that terrible scene with the Venom suit and he's like Oh, uh, something from that film. Well, you know that scene where he's going down like the street, you know, because he's all like, because he's like you're a massive jerk now, and he's doing all that film for all the ladies and everything. Mm-hmm. If you on YouTube, anybody who's watching this in the future, whatever, look up that scene, but look at it without music. It is so cringy. It's brilliant. I mean, the thing that I want to know is who in the makeup department thought that was a cool haircut? Oh, what, like, it's like the. the with. Yeah, it just looks like someone just went and then just went, ah, oh, sod it, I ran it, out of hair just, gel. It wasn't, it, it didn't come across the way it was meant to. It just looked really cringy. It was just, oh. It did not come across as cool whatsoever. The only scene that I liked when he was being a bit of a douchebag was the like whole bar scene where he does like the dance and he like flips with the woman that's meant to look like Gwen Stacy, but he not Gwen see yeah but yeah it was a hell of a yeah it's a hell of a thing when he was venom regardless yeah which we will not talk about ever again because we got venom which i'm very happy with yeah but last thing to add to this as well obviously spider-man felt obviously spider-man no way home really looking forward to it looking forward to seeing what's going to come out i doubt we'll be happy with the explanation but we'll get what we've got and then we'll do another video when it's out when we've watched it we'll go from there and obviously i know there's probably going to be loads of you spider-man fans that are going to be looking out on youtube to find leaked footage well there is and we're not going to say anything here but we can't control what you google but there is some leaked footage out there and Oh, my damn. <laughs> but I'm just going to leave it there, but we can't control what you choose to Google. <laughs> Definitely. But uh, so not- Thank you very much, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And so the next time that you will see us, it will be Ben's topic. So, Ben, what is your next topic for the next video? So I want to stick with more Marvel stuff for a change because we try right. to be a bit more varied, but... With the Loki TV series coming soon in the next few weeks, it might be next month, give or take, I don't know. Disney keep changing their mind. But I want to try and go over the concept of how there's branch realities, what in terms of branch realities and how it's going to fit into the rest of the future of MCU. Because I think to a degree that because of Loki, we're going to get the whole Spidey crossover thing in the first place. Yes, yeah. And... There's a lot of things that the Loki TV series, I think, is going to set up for the future, which I really can't wait to go over with you next week. Yep, sure thing. So there we go. That's two dudes, two furry little guys, ramp raving and rambling, all things sci-fi and comic booky. Again, it was something to rant about. But again, stay safe, stay home, and we'll see you all soon. See you later, people. Oh, <laughs>